the common carotid artery around the level of the larynx will split to make the external carotid and the external carotid will service the more superficial features of you know the face and the jaw muscles etc so the external carotid and of greater importance to us here the internal carotid which will then go to the brain so the common carotid will split to make an external carotid to the face and the internal carotid which will then pass through the in uh, the carotid canal or the carotid foramen uh, in the temporal bone okay. and here we see the internal carotid then uh, coming through this uh, carotid uh, canal here. In Anatomy and Physiology 1, when the cervical vertebrae were studied, the way of identifying a cervical vertebra was noted as the hole which occurs in the transverse uh, process of these neck vertebrae, the transverse foramen. The reason for the hole in uh, the transverse process, the reason for this transverse uh, foramen, is because there is a vertebral artery which passes through the transverse foramina of uh, the neck vertebrae. So an alternate route to get blood to the brain is to go from the subclavian artery to one of its first branches, the vertebral artery. The vertebral then passes through uh, the transverse foramina of the um, of the cervical uh, vertebrae, and then as it goes through the foramen magnum, the left and right vertebral arteries fuse to become one single artery known as the basilar. So the left and right vertebral arteries will fuse to become the basilar artery. That is also evident in this model, where we see, coming from the foramen magnum, the left and right vertebral arteries fusing to become the basilar artery. And this is also evident on this model, where the left and right uh, vertebral arteries fuse to make the one single artery, the basilar artery. Now, we have discussed the topic of anastomoses, and anastomosis is a system where there are alternate routes of blood flow to a body part, which is an advantage should there be blockage or an, uh, an obstruction or genetic uh, deformation of one of these vessels. And here we see an anastomosis in the brain. The vertebral arteries form the basilar artery, which is here and the internal carotid arteries enter here. These then form a circle known as the cerebral arterial circle, formerly more commonly called the circle of Willis. So this cerebral arterial circle is an anastomosis formed when the internal carotids and the basilar uh, artery from the vertebrals fuse their blood supply. Now, there are connections between these called communicating arteries. So there is an anterior communicating artery which fuses uh, uh, these blood vessels, the two internal carotids here on the anterior side. And then there is a posterior communicating artery connecting the interior, uh, internal carotids to the basilar here and here. So the circle is completed by the posterior communicating arteries and the anterior communicating arteries. In this model, we also see this cerebral arterial circle where we have the basilar artery here, the internal uh, carotid arteries here, and then the posterior communicating arteries and the anterior communicating arteries. This model does not depict the full circle, but it does depict the internal carotid arteries uh, and the anterior communicating arteries which connects them. From the cerebral arterial circle comes arteries which will then service the different regions of the brain. There is a posterior cerebral artery, a middle cerebral artery, and then anterior uh, cerebral arteries which are not evident here. On this model then we also see the posterior cerebral artery the middle cerebral artery, and then the anterior cerebral arteries.